Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Senator, Senators. Uh, David Weissman, Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. And indeed, um, I'm having a Yogi Berra moment of deja vu all over again here because um, I believe it was a hearing you convened in April 14th of 2011, in which rightly so, you asked of the utilities some of the very questions that I suppose are coming back to haunt them. If, if I may, in fact, a Senator, you actually asked them, and if I may quote, because it was a very prescient question, are there rough numbers, thumbnail numbers? Let's say the plants go down and they're not coming back anytime soon. Is it two days to restoring power without blackouts or brownouts? Is it three days, five days, five weeks? What are the ratepayer impacts? And that was the right question to ask. And at the time, Edison's resource planner said that that, quote, that process is really not designed to look at long-term loss of large elements of generation or transmission. It's really designed to look at what you might normally expect over the course of a year in terms of unavailability of power when you might otherwise want it. And so you responded, so the worst case scenario that you're asked to prepare for really isn't truly the worst case scenario. Is that what I'm hearing? And they agreed with you and said it's a fair assessment. I think the idea that the unlikelihood of such an event makes it such that to spend potentially billions of dollars against the low probability doesn't appear to be warranted. And yet here we are two years later discussing what could be very expensive issues, that's the various uh, participants have said, about uh, what this could cost us. So your questions were certainly extremely prescient. Now, I should point out there was someone else at the table with the representative from Medicine that day, and that was the representative from Pacific Gas and Electric. And when you asked him the same question, his response to you was, well, I guess I would answer from uh, the way Diablo Canyon is designed to run, with outages being offset by operations of the Helms Hydro facility, it makes it less of a power perturbation. So I don't know that I have any data I could that I would say we've gone out and done for you recently. I could perhaps get that to you later, but I don't have that. And I would posit that, uh, you know, the question uh, is an important one. Um, in fact, I wrote to your staff at the time, uh, I waited a couple of months and said, um, have the fellows from PG&E ever gotten that data back to Senator Padilla? And, or did he ask for it? And the answer was no, we, we don't have that information on file. Uh, but I would posit that that unanswered question today is now even more important because we've seen exactly what can happen in what was described as the extreme unlikelihood of an event. And that getting that answer today from the PG&E representative who didn't answer at the time two years ago might be valuable because it looks like we can no longer be guaranteed that an unlikely event like the shutdown of a major nuclear reactor is not an impossibility. And uh, while it's true that the ISO's latest report has said that Diablo Canyon is not a must-run facility in terms of transmission reliability, it may be for future planning of, of uh, generation sources. As well, there are also jobs and local economies dependent upon it. So it would seem a lesson learned would be that the um, questions that were asked of Edison that they, they failed to provide and hence the undoing uh, should be asked of PG&E as well now so that we don't have to have a similar type of post-mortem discussion perhaps well, whenever it may or may not, might not occur, but that, that question does deserve uh, that you asked so wisely two years ago an answer from them now. So thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, well, in, in part, uh, sort of still in my closing comments, thunder uh, with uh, reading from the transcript from that hearing of a few years ago. But I think part of, uh, you know, why, why we're here today is because the uh, once envisioned worst case scenario wasn't bad enough, uh, but it's it's uh, come to uh, happen, and uh, I think the people of California deserve for not just the regulators but the uh, legislators, the lawmakers, uh, to be on top of the the various questions that we're posing today and will pose in the future hearings.